So welcome. This is the Senior Community Center Something to Talk About program. We are grateful to Fieldstone Communities of Bainbridge Island for sponsoring these programs. We do three times a week at 1.30 in the afternoon. They're also available um, on YouTube at youtube.com slash BI Senior Center. Fieldstone offers memory care and independent living and is about to open assisted living units. Uh, they are looking for residents, so you might want to schedule a tour if it sounds interesting. They also offer day stay and respite programs. A phone number to jot down if you'd like to make an appointment to find out more, 360-594-1010. Also, I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are meeting uh, on the ancestral homelands of the Salish, the Coast Salish people, specifically the Suquamish tribe, uh, the people of the clear salt water who have lived on these waters since time immemorial, and we are grateful for their stewardship and their hospitality. Today's topic is emergency hubs with Bainbridge Prepares, and Alice Ostick is, Ostick is with us today. She's a co-lead of the uh, hubs organization, which has been working for the last few years on trying to figure out the best way to have um, region or local neighborhood centers uh, to help us in the event of a disaster, which although we aren't looking forward to, we are not looking forward to it even more if we aren't thinking about it in advance. So Alice, thank you very much for joining us today. Great, thank you so much. And I wanna acknowledge Reed has been part of some of our planning process and has had quite a bit of in input into um, what we've done so far. So um, I have a short slideshow, which I'll share with the, the group here. If you just get, bear with me for a moment. Okay, there we go. Um, so Reed asked me to kind of talk to the group about um, Disaster Hubs, which is uh, one effort under the umbrella of Bainbridge Preparers working in partnership with the city um, and the fire department, and then with special thanks to the park district that has uh, been an incredible partner in um, being able to set up um, or use some of their facilities, both as potential disaster hub sites, as well as uh, for some of our storage and other activities. So um, thanks to all of those partners uh, in getting this going. So um, as, as Reed mentioned, there are two of us that are the co-leads for this effort, and that's myself and Ian Proffer. Um, and if there are any questions, um, the general email hubs-leads at bainbridgeprepares.org is a great place to reach both of us. Um, so happy to field questions that come up after the fact on this. So I'll just kind of talk through, um, you know, generally the Bainbridge Prepares partnership. So folks have a good context for where this comes out of. Um, and then I want to give a little overview of our Disaster Hubs program and the network that we're developing, um, what kinds of services that we're uh, planning to be able to provide at those uh, Disaster Hubs, and then how you can fit in to those Disaster Hubs if you have time to volunteer um, or if you um, are in need of services at, at a time when a disaster hits. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll talk a little bit about the planning that we've done, including sort of when we'd use the hubs and sort of how they would be uh, activated. And then, you know, I've got time for questions at the end, but uh, I was telling Reed earlier, happy to take questions as we go along. Um, so this is a little bit of an overview. Some of you may be familiar with this, um, but for those who aren't, there are basically uh, the three organizations that have taken responsibility for sort of emergency management strategic planning within the city. Um, the city itself is, plays the role of the lead agency in partnering with the fire department and then the community nonprofit, which is Bainbridge Prepares. Um, and you can see on this chart, uh, you know, the city kind of takes uh, the lead on mitigation and communications and um, infrastructure, logistics, and that sort of thing. And they oversee um, both the emergency operations center, which is the, the sort of brain center when any disaster would hit, um, where everything is coordinated out of, out of, but they also oversee the care and sheltering, um, public safety, security, damage assessment, um, things like that. <clears throat> and then the, the uh, fire district, of course, is responsible for fire and emergency medical responses and things of, those of that nature. 
Um, and then Bainbridge Prepares has sort of a plethora of teams, um, you know, a group that are sort of preparedness teams that have ongoing activities, um, including I believe Map Your Neighborhood is one that many of you may be familiar with. Hopefully you're engaged with your Map Your Neighborhood group. Um, ready Congregations um, and some of the other uh, types of community outreach programs. Um, I'll and just then we notice, have several I'll just, I'll just pop in here yeah. to say about Map Your Neighborhoods that we had a discussion not long ago with Ann Cook about that. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it's queued up as the next video after this conversation. Perfect. Thanks, Reed. Um, and then we have a bunch of emergency response teams of which the disaster hubs is one of them. Um, we also have our medical reserve corps. We have our radio service, our, our ham radio operators, uh, big wheels, which is uh, transportation in sort of uh, disaster and storm events um, and a number of other um, programs you can see listed there. Um, and so together, you know, we work in partnership with all of these different agencies and the disaster hubs themselves, um, you know, form kind of a unique role because we really coordinate, you know, and integrate with all three partners, um, but will be staffed by volunteers. Um, and that could include you. So here's an, an overview of the network we've developed. So working with the city, um, We've developed, um, you know, legal relationships with the owners or operators of about 14 different sites on the island, um, and you can see them on the little map there. This is our current uh, map. This map uh, is on the Bainbridge Prepares website, and it does get updated as we uh, reach new legal agreements with these different owners and operators and develop plans, um, you know, to be able to activate any of those sites. Um, but right now we've got about 14 sites, including the Child Reunification Center, which would be at the high school, um, and then as well uh, a disaster medical clinic, um, which right now we have plans for that would be located at the Virginia Mason uh, facility. Um, and so those are sort of the places where you might find these sort of services. Um, this is designed so that we can have volunteers to supplement the response by the city, the county, the state, federal agencies um, in the event of a disaster. So again, these would be volunteer driven, um, run by volunteers. Um, we're hoping to be able to provide pr primarily information, some first aid um, and some triage and to be able to be a distribution point for supplies if those were necessary. Um, <clears throat> We, as you can see, we've distributed them throughout the island, generally in sort of three regions is the way we think about it, north, central, and south. Um, and the senior center and the rowing center adjacent, you know, are important um, pieces of this puzzle, um, as well as you can see several um, churches, several public buildings and park buildings, um, school buildings, and that sort of thing. Um, what we've developed, we have a number of working assumptions and, um, you know, sort of planning documents for how one of these sites would be run. Um, but we expect volunteers um, who are already part of Bainbridge Prepares will be assigned to show up um, and provide assistance in defined roles at each of these sites after a disaster. Um, and if you're not part of Bainbridge Prepares, but after a disaster, you find yourself able to prepare, we're also planning to welcome many spontaneous volunteers. So folks we haven't met before, but we'll be happy to use you if you're available. Um, so that is sort of the overview of the network. I can pause there if there are any questions uh, that folks have now. You mentioned that there are 14 hubs. Um, is that, are you, are you still in conversations about other locations or are there other aspects of sort of preparedness sites? Uh, I know you can't name them specifically, but are you working on that? Is there value for more or does this, you know, what's your goal in terms of hubs yeah. for the island? Thanks. We're constantly evaluating, you know, are these the right sites? Um, we are right now going through each of our sites and doing a little bit of an inventory to make sure that we feel like they're going to be adequate and what sorts of services we're going to be able. Some are larger, some are smaller. Um, and so there may be some variation in what sorts of services can be provided at every site. And we want to evaluate to make sure, I think our goal is that there be 
you know, at least one hub site that is, you know, generally within what we call walking distance, but, uh, you know, of every home on the island. Now, that's, you know, going to vary a little bit and, and how people's ability to get around, um, you know, will affect that. But generally, we know there are some areas where we would like to, um, you know, have more sites, particularly you can see we only have three that are located at the south end of the island. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're, we're looking constantly evaluating, talking with, um, you know, site potential site owners about the possibilities. Um, you know, we also have worked through the Ready Congregations program with a number of the churches just to develop their own services outside of the Bainbridge Preparers Network, but we would be able to talk with those folks as well. So it might be that your church, um, you know, already has an active feeding program, for example, and they might be able to, you know, do that sort of independently, but we would coordinate with them. Um, so we're, we're really looking to, to be able to provide services and reach everybody on the island eventually. Oops. All right. Um, so here's a little bit more about, you know, kind of how we expect a hub site to work. Um, we expect basically to be able to provide three high level things. One is information and communications. So after a disaster, we want those hubs to be central locations that can provide official information that gets communicated directly from the city emergency operations center to those hubs. And so, you know, at a minimum, um, we would be able to post information outside of those hub sites um, and hopefully, be, hopefully have volunteers there um, who can help take questions and information and try to either get uh, questions answered directly by the city um, or disseminate information that the city wants everyone to know or provide information back to the EOC. For example, if you know that your neighborhood has been cut off by a fallen tree, um, you know, a hub might be a good place to communicate that because we will have one of our first things is establish communications with our radio operators so that we'll have a direct line to the uh, emergency operations center. Um, <clears throat> the second type of service we're hoping to be able to provide at every hub would be some level of advanced first aid. Um, on the island, we have a very robust medical reserve corps, which includes everyone from, you know, doctors and nurses, um, you know, and other types of medical practitioners to volunteers who have done emergency first aid training, wilderness first aid training, um, and that sort of thing. So we will have a variety of folks with ability to provide first aid up to some some level of medical care um, that we should be able to provide at each hub um, and if not provide use the hub as a collection point to be able to transport individuals um, to our disaster medical center where more of our uh, doctors and nurses um, and medical practitioners will be located um, and then beyond that, to be able to transport people off the island if necessary uh, in a real emergency um, where we would, we would be coordinating with the fire department um, and other emergency transport um, to do that. But at every hub, we would at least be able to provide some level of triage and again, that communication piece to know if people are in immediate need of care to be able to try to get them connected with that care. Um, and then the last thing, um, which is sort of a big umbrella or a big net, um, but at each emergency, at each disaster hub, we hope to be able to provide some level of meeting basic community needs. So this may be um, everything from community matchmaking, um, which means uh, we will be working closely with all those map your neighborhood captains um, and determining, you know, what resources the neighborhoods might be able to supply. Um, do folks have a, an extra bedroom, a backyard someone could camp in? Um, <clears throat> do folks have extra water or food supplies, things like that, um, or tools or other kinds of things that uh, different map your neighborhood groups might be able to come up with and match those up with needs of individuals within that neighborhood or an adjacent neighborhood or somewhere else uh, within that hubs service area. Um, and then meeting basic needs, including, you know, community care and sheltering. So, you know, again, I think uh, even with all 14 sites, we couldn't provide a shelter bed for every single person on the island. So we would be working closely with those Map Your Neighborhood groups, but we will have some limited sheltering capabilities, um, you know, at each hub site, depending on, again, the size of the site and the suitability for that. 
Um, but we are making plans for that as well at the hubs. Um, and then I think I mentioned earlier, you know, distribution points. If we are in the type of emergency that requires distribution of emergency food or water or things like that, we would be looking to use those hub sites as places for that to occur. So we want to kind of, you know, uh, concentrate our community resources and our response on those hub sites, um, you know, to the extent possible. Um, we also would uh, have, you know, extensive ability to uh, try to uh, work on reunifications. So if we find out, you know, again, back to that communication piece, you know, if we know that somebody's looking for another family member who may have been in Seattle during the disaster or may have been in another part of the island during the disaster, um, we're going to be working, you know, through the emergency operations center at the city to match, you know, up people who are missing and work on missing persons um, types of reports and things like that. So that's kind of an overview of, um, you know, kind of what we expect to happen at the hubs. Um, and, uh, you know, as you can guess, this is going to take a lot of volunteers. Um, and so I just want to put that pitch out there that if you're somebody who has some ability to uh, volunteer, we are going to be over the next probably six months or year or so recruiting and training volunteers to kind of fill each of those roles, whether it's, you know, working at a reception desk and just being able to answer questions or provide information, or if you're somebody with um, medical qualifications, we could certainly use you, or if you know how to operate a ham radio. Um, so all of those types of, you know, there's no uh, special prerequisites. We'll take anybody and we will certainly be happy to help train folks to be able to do these jobs, but things like reception and shelter, um, you know, they just require that you be a caring person who's, you know, able to talk to people and help calm them down in an emergency. So, um, you know, we welcome all of that as well. Yeah, I think that one of the things that we talked about with Ann Cook was that um, although the first order of business for everybody is going to be making sure that your family or that your household is safe um, and then maybe checking with your neighbors, um, if you know that as soon as you've got those things checked off that you can actually help other people by, you know, walking a mile or two to the to the nearest hub. It's going to take the pressure off of the um, of the fire department or police department, which is going to be um, doing their best and scrambling. And a lot of those people don't even live on the island. So um, so we're going to be not only faced with the challenge of more work than they could do, even if they were fully staffed, but recognizing it might take them a while a day or more to get here. Uh, so sort of knowing how you might fit in in a disaster is uh, is worth thinking about now. So thank you, Alice, for that. But yes, it does sound very ambitious. <laughs> Sheila, do you have something? I, yeah. I have a question. Yeah, uh, so if I wanted to volunteer for something, mm -hmm. uh, how do I go about doing that? I presume you're going to talk about that. Yeah, um, I don't know if I put, it on the slide, but that I'll show you at the end, the email address. You could just send an email to us at hubs-leads at bainbridgeprepares.com. Um, and I'll show you that email again at the end of the presentation um, or go to the Bainbridge Prepares website. And there's lots of information there about how to volunteer and how to sign up. Thank you. So, um, Main, a main question people have usually is, you know, how and when would we use the hubs? Um, and so we have a couple of different scenarios. One, if there is a catastrophic earthquake, so a major earthquake on either the Cascadia subduction zone or the Seattle fault, and we kind of tell people, you'll know it when that one hits. Um, then all of the current volunteers have instructions to report to their nearest hub. Um, and we'll have a, you know, a role for them at that hub and we have instructions on how to get those hubs started. So they are sort of self-deployed in that case. So in, if we have those major disasters, people aren't waiting around for the city to tell us what to do. Um, we are just, you know, we are just uh, directing people to go ahead and just report, open up the hubs. You know, we have folks who have been through our trainings now understand you know where to find the information they need we have all the supplies will be they're not at every hub site just yet but 
Uh, we're making really good progress on stashing supplies at our hub sites um, so that in the event of a disaster, it, it's as easy as showing up and knowing how to get into the supplies um, and open the instruction book and, and get things going. So those are the two cases where we would expect volunteers to sort of self-deploy and open up hubs. Um, you know, and the first thing to be done there is to establish communications then with the city. So that's sort of the, the level of um, importance there is communications. As soon as we have people there, we want to be in communication with the city and get a sense of what's happening. Um, <clears throat> but there are other potential scenarios where we might open a hub. Um, for example, if there were a major wildfire evacuation on the island. And so folks were evacuated from one neighborhood, we might open a, a hub space to provide shelter, um, you know, emergency medical and information at a different location on the island where we could um, help take care of those folks. Um, same thing if we had a major landslide or major flooding event. Um, we've, uh, the city has in the past provided severe weather shelters at a number of places. Um, you know, depending on the type of weather, uh, we might actually use a hub site for that and we might utilize our hub uh, volunteers um, to do that. We have not in the past, but that's something that that could happen in the future. Um, or, for example, a ferry emer emergency. Um, you know, we had, we did last, you know, when was it last fall, have the, uh, the grounding of the Walla Walla at the south end. Um, and <clears throat> we did have discussions about whether that would be the kind of um, time and place where we might end up having to open up a, a hub site. Um, you know, in that, in that event, um, there were already arrangements to bus and ferry all of those people to other locations so they didn't get stranded on the island and we didn't need to do that. Um, but that could have been a response if that were necessary. Um, so those are the kinds of things. Um, but in all of those last set of scenarios, um, we would be waiting for the city's emergency operations center to direct us and tell us that we should go and open a particular hub site or, or more than one. Um, those would not be scenarios where we would expect every hub site to be activated. Um, but that's, the senior that's center a... has been opened a few times as either a warming mm -hmm. shelter or a cooling station with uh, search citizen emergency response trainers, is that what that stands for? Yeah. Cert volunteers, um, staffing it with under the direction of um, of Ann LeSage in the city yep. emergency program. Yep, and, th and that's the sort of thing that we might um, utilize our hub structure for, uh, you know, in the future at some point, so. Any other questions about that? All right, well, I think that's that's pretty much the end of the slideshow I had here. Um, let me uh, quick go back to the first one. And there's the, um, the uh, email address if anyone's interested in volunteering or has other questions about the Disaster Hubs program. Um, again, it's hubs-leads at bainbridgeprepares.org. Are you looking for a couple of people? Um, uh, I mean, do you have? A couple of people, I guess I should say, as starting points for each of these 14 uh, spots you have, or are you still trying to um, put together leadership teams for those? We are still putting together our leadership teams. Um, and so, you know, if you're somebody who is interested in a leadership role, you know, please mention that in your email. Um, but I also know lots of people would rather show up, you know, just in the case of the emergency and then be told what to do and is happy, you know, happy to um, be at a reception level or, you know, helping with shelter or food preparation or things like that. There's, what, you know, there's a variety of opportunities, but we definitely are looking for folks with leadership skills and, and interest um, in sort of filling out some of our leadership roles as well. And I know that uh, we're, I mean, sort of a silver lining of the uh, pandemic, which didn't have very many silver linings, was that we had a great response to the vaccine clinics and identified a whole bunch of medical personnel who have now been volunteers. Um, and that kind of thing where even if we aren't doing anything right now, even if you know that, you know, you're not really interested in attending a lot of meetings, but you want to put your name on the list so that you can get a background check and be more useful in the event of a disaster, 
uh, be a known person, that is a good reason to send a note to the email today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, unless you tell me that you're interested in a leadership role, we'll reach out to anybody who contacts us. But um, folks who, you know, are interested in a leadership role can expect, you know, some more training and, um, you know, a, a few more meetings and things like that, if that's what you want to be engaged with. But it's also perfectly acceptable if you just want to say, you know, I want to be on the list. Um, please do try to register with the city because uh, one of our things when we have volunteers come in, if we already have you on a list and you've been pre-cleared and we have a sense of you know, what qualifications you have um, or what trainings you've done in the past, um, that will help us find you a good job that's a good fit. Um, and so you know, there'll be some you know, informational meetings and things like that for people who are interested. Um, but if all you want to do is put your name on the list, we still encourage you to go ahead and register as a volunteer. So, Alice, so I'm, I guess I'm a little confused. Uh, so if I wanted just to um, uh, get on the list and uh, mm -hmm. tell people the different kinds of things that I could do, uh, do I still go to this hubs.leads? Leads? Yep, if you just send me an email for any of those, um, I can direct you to the right place. Just send me a quick email um, and, and we will get you hooked up with, with whatever it is that fits the interest you express. All right, I don't have to tell anything about that then. That you'll just get back to me on the other yep. stuff. Okay, thank you. The leads means you're communicating with the leads, not that you are becoming one. Marcy, did you have a comment? Yeah, I have a question, uh, no, or a comment. Uh, I'd like to see a better distribution of knowledge about where your hub is. So whether it was done by sent by the ward, where are the hubs in the central ward, or where are the hubs in the in the north ward, um, so people would know immediately where they were and just take for granted that they have the knowledge. I had memorized at some time ago the last when they was a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. But I have no don't remember now where that hub was and whether it's still uh, active. So I would like an easy way for everybody to be uh, notified of where their hubs are and as they like annually, so that you because they do change. So yep, that's all. Absolutely, and I think there's two ways that we're working on that. Um, one is just a general communications campaign, so people have a much better sense. Um, some of it is doing presentations like this, um, but also specifically to get out, uh, you know, easy information, copies of the maps, uh, website links, and, and various other places where people will, will get to know what their hub is. We also want to work closely with those Map Your Neighborhood groups so that every Map Your Neighborhood captain knows exactly where their hub is. Um, and then over the next year or so, we hope to uh, host some community gatherings at the hubs. And so, you know, we'll actually go to one of our hub sites, open it up, set it up um, so people can see what, what it would look like, and then invite, you know, the community that lives in proximity to that hub. So people will actually have been there and they'll see it in operation. So that will also help people remember where, where to go. Put that slide back up before we go. Mm -hmm. Just put the slide of the hubs back up before we go. Yeah, I think I can do that. Yep. There, we there go. you go. So um, that sounds like a great idea to keep our eyes and ears open about maybe a uh, get together in our neighborhoods coming up in the next six to eight to 12 months. Yep. Thank you, Alice, so much for walking us through this. This has been very informative and it's a, uh, Hey, per Marcy's point, we'll talk to you in a year, <laughs> if not sooner, about uh, about what's going on.